Okay, so today we're looking at 5.4, division of decimals by whole numbers. This is no more than dividing in the way that you already know. Okay, here is our problem. In a swimming relay, each swimmer swims an equal part of the total distance. Brianna and three other swimmers won a relay in 5 and 6,800 minutes. What is the average time each girl swam? Think and record. This is one way you can do it. <clears throat> Step one, share the ones. Divide by ones divided by four, which we already did. Okay, so four goes into five one time. And we'd write our four down, and then five minus four in one. Okay, so, 1 times 4 is 4, and then we subtract to get 1. Subtract 5 1s minus 4 1s. Check. 1 1 cannot be shared among 4 groups without regrouping. Okay? So if we were to model that, we would have, here's our 4 circles. And we're going to put one one in each circle. And we're going to have that one hole left over. Okay, here we go. Share the tenths. So I would have my one here. I would bring down my six. Now how many fours in sixteen? Four. Four. And that goes in evenly, doesn't it? So this says divide 16 tenths divided by 4. Multiply 4 times 4 tenths. Subtract by 16 tenths minus 16 tenths. Check. Zero tenths cannot be shared among four groups. So here in the diagram, we've shared our tenths, four in each of the four circles. So what are we going to do next? We're going to divide our hundreds. Okay? So we would have had our four up here. And when we subtracted our 16, we got 0. So we bring down our 8. And how many 4s can go into 8 hundredths? 2, right? So multiply 4 times 2 hundredths. Subtract 8 minus 8 hundredths, which is what we've done here to get zero hundredths, cannot be shared among four groups. Place the decimal point in the quotient to separate the ones and the tenths. So each girl swam an average of one and 42 hundredths minutes. Notice that our decimal just goes straight up from where it is in our uh, dividend. My word. Just goes straight up. That's why it's important to keep our things lined up, our place values lined up. Okay, we should be moving on to page 214, another way. It says use an estimate. We did this earlier this morning. So what can we round 47 to? 50. 50, that's what they did here. And $40.89. They rounded to four thousand hundredths. Divide the tenths so um how many forty sevens in forty? 
None, right? Oh, yeah. Well, go in there. So now we're working with 408. How many 47s in 408? Eight. What is 47 times 8? What's 8 times 7? 56. We group a little 5. 8 times 4 is 32, right? Plus 5 is 37. So we can subtract that. We have to do a little regrouping here. Whoops, not that far. 8 minus, let's take care of that. Let's try that again. 8 minus 6 is 2. We can't have 0 minus 7, so now we're going to do our regrouping. 10 minus 7 is 3, and 3 minus 3 is nothing. Check, can we have 47 into 32? No. So how many 47s? We've got to bring down our 9. How many 47s in 329? 7 of them. 7 times 7 is 49, right? Regroup our 4. 7 times 4 is 28, plus 4 is 32. We subtract, that leaves us with nothing to divide up anymore. It says use your estimate to place the zero to show that there are no ones. Okay, so $40.89 divided by 47 is zero dollars and 87 cents. I'm going to try this at the bottom. <clears throat> well, let's look at the explain in the middle of the page. It says, explain how you use the estimate to place the decimal point in the quotient. Okay, in the middle of that page, page 214, it says, explain how you use the estimate to place the decimal point in the quotient. Since the estimate is 80 cents, I know the decimal has to be placed to the left of the 8 in the quotient. And this is what we got for our quotient, 87 cents. So it has to be close to 80, and that's how we place the decimal. Okay. Here's try this down at the bottom of your page. It says use multiplication to check your work. 23. How many 23s in 79? Four. Four? Well, let's see if we can do that. 23 times four. That's 92, so that's a little bit big. So let's do 23 times 3, which is 69. So I can say 1 here and go 69. Notice how I'm trying to keep everything lined up. 9 minus 9 is 0. 7 minus 6 is 1. Is 10 less than 23? Yes. So I can't share 23 groups within that. Now I'm going to bring down my 3. How many 23s in 103? Let's look here. There were 4 in 92. You think there are going to be 5? Yeah. Let's see. Well, let's try 23 times 5. That's 115. So we're going to have to go back to our 4. We're going to bring our decimal straight up. So 4 times 23 was 92. And if I subtract, 3 minus 2 is 1. Do a little regrouping here. 10 minus 9 is 1. Now we're going to bring down our 5. And what did we find out over here when we did 23 times 5? So we can do 5, 115, and we have 0, which leaves us nothing to share. Now, if you remember clearer back toward the beginning of the year, we could multiply to check, right? So we're going to take our divisor, 
and we're going to multiply it by our quotient. Okay, so 3 times 5 is 15, regroup of 1. 3 times 4 is 12, plus 1 is 13, regroup of 1. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 1 is 4. We're going to put our 0 to save our place value. 2 times 5 is 10, regroup of 1. 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9. And 2 times 1 is 2. If we add this together, Whoa! Uh oh is it, You got it wrong. Is it only three point three? Three point forty-five. Okay, our multiply to check didn't work out, and look what Mrs. Stegman did. She put a one here instead of a three. Oh no! So we're going to have to fix that up. So it should be three point four five, right? Which would make this a three. Okay, so three times, we'd still be doing the same, but three times three is nine plus one is, this should be a 10. Okay. Zero and a one. And then we have the same, but two times three is six. Let's see if that works out for us. Five plus zero is five. Three plus zero is three. Zero plus three is nine. And six plus one is six. And there we have our seventy-nine and thirty-five. Points.